everyone, Hamer back with another Mission Impossible episode review. This time we are reviewing Season 6, Episode 14, which is called The Connection. So this one starts out with a meeting between a fellow named Reese Dolan. He's visiting a major drug distributor named Clegg, offering to supply Clegg with a huge amount of heroin. All he needs is some startup cash. Clegg agrees. Jim gets his instructions in an office. The mission... Dolan plans to use an island near Africa to run his operation, and the IMF must identify his supplier and dealer to put them all out of business. In the apartment scene, we learn that the island is named Malo, and Dolan plans to use a house on Malo owned by someone named Madame Renata. The IMF plans to duplicate the setup on an island near the U.S. state of Georgia, with Casey taking the place of Madame Renata. Clegg supplies Dolan with a million dollars and then gets one of his men named Charlie Finch to keep an eye on Dolan and the money. Willie, Casey, and some IMF associates set up the chateau and surrounding area, and they even have a telephone operator named Simone who has a French accent. Everyone heads off to Rome, where Dolan and his men Bates and Page are getting on his flight, with pilot Barney and Madame Renata's assistant Jim, who calls himself Matthew, uh, accompanying them. Finch seizes the opportunity to stow into the plane's cargo bay unseen. During the flight, the IMF release anesthetic gas into the plane. They put on masks, putting Dolan and his men to sleep, as well as Charlie. Jim sets the men's watches to the expected time, but not Charlie, of course. Everyone arrives and is greeted by Madame Casey, and Charlie gets out of the plane and hides out of sight as Barney takes off again, uh, looking at his watch and realizing something's not quite right here. At the chateau, Paige takes a casual shot at a pigeon, drawing the ire of Jim as Matthew, as both he and Madame Casey warn the trio that if they attract any trouble from the authorities, the whole shebang is over. Paige wonders if Jim is as tough as the axe, and Casey, Casey assures him that it's no act. Finch follows the car tracks and on the way there finds a pack of American cigarettes, which he finds odd. Dolan's crew checks out the lab setup, finds it satisfactory. Madam Casey says she wants a percentage of the profits, in addition to her $400,000 fee that they agreed to, and says she might be willing to negotiate a more permanent agreement if she had some better idea of who else was involved in the operation. But Dolan is too smart to agree to that. Dolan places a call to a number in Istanbul to get the opium delivered. Jim gets the call traced, but it turns out to be a payphone. Authorities are able to redirect the chartered flight to Rome, where Barney awaits, and the IMF gets the opium, but no information about who the supplier is. Paige and Bates want to go into town as they're bored out of their skulls, demanding the car keys from Jim. Paige pulls his gun out, but Jim manages to subdue both of them. Dolan tells Paige to take a walk, calm down, and warns both of his men to mind their P's and Q's. Meanwhile, Finch comes to the chateau and quietly scopes out the place, surprising Paige from behind and demanding answers at knife point about what's going on. Finch fatally stabs Paige when he recognizes him, and Finch dashes away. The body is found, and Madame Casey talks it up to bandits that somehow sometimes are around, but the IMF is clearly worried about their plan being dashed to pieces by this unexpected wildcard, and Jim alerts the security that has cordoned off the chateau that Finch somehow got around. From some, for some inexplicable, absolutely inexplicable reason, the IMF doesn't even bother to lock the chateau doors. Maybe it all happened a little bit too quickly, but still, that was glaring. And Fink is able to get inside Casey's room and grab her. Only the sound of a lamp crashing alerts Jim, who rushes to the rescue with an obvious stunt double fighting off Finch, but whatever. There is that brief fight, but Finch escapes stealthily back out the window. The next morning, the opium arrives, and Reese and Bates get to work in the lab, with Finch appearing at a window. Dolan places a call to Clegg, letting him know that the delivery is coming in the morning, and Willie is dispatched with the information. Willie, his assistant Pascal, drives Bates and the drugs to the airfield, where they encounter police, but Willie says, not to worry, it's his uncle. He'll take care of everything. The uncle says he needs to check Bates' travel visa and takes him out of the picture, while Dolan's supplier in Istanbul stews at not knowing where his pilot and, more importantly, his money is. He places a call to Dolan about it, with the, which the IMF trace, and Dolan says that if the pilot flew off with the money, that's the supplier's problem. 
Willie visits Clegg with the drugs, a sample, as a new player in the game. Clegg gets a call from the supplier, and they commiserate about the fact that Dolan seems to be going into business for himself, as neither the drugs nor the money are where they're supposed to be. Clegg's boys hold Willie down and work him over, demanding answers. Clegg finds Madame Renata's address in Willie's little black book, and Willie admits that, yeah, okay, you, you figured it out. She has the stuff. She's working with a new partner. He says he was supposed to meet someone in Rome for the merchandise. Clegg takes him there to meet pilot Barney, who is informed he's got some extra passengers. Barney pulls the same thing with the anesthetic and watch reset trick on Clegg's boys to whisk them over to the IMF's uh, island on, near Georgia. Finch continues to evade the IMF patrol and comes across a gas station, realizing that he's on the coast of Georgia, and calls Clegg, being told that he's on his way to Malo. Madame Renata sympathizes with Dolan about his plight. All his contacts seem to be either incommunicado or really upset with him. The whole thing has gone bad. Casey says she'll arrange a plane for him so that he can leave and he can figure out what's going on. She goes to the airstrip and acts surprised to see Clegg and his men accompanying Willie. Clegg tells her to take him to see Dolan, and she agrees. Finch surprises Jim in the lab, telling him he knows what's going on. Simone, fortunately, overhears. They hear the door opening, and Finch realizes that's Clegg arriving. Dolan is surprised to see him and wonders what's going on, with Casey saying, Oh, give it up. Their plan failed. The jig is up. Dolan says he's being framed. Simone smartly makes a phone ring in the lab, distracting Finch so that Jim can knock the gun out of his hand. There's a fight and a gunshot is heard, Finch taking the bullet during the struggle. Clegg comes downstairs and discovers Finch as Jim disappears out the window. Clegg demands answers and Dolan starts to explain, but they both fall silent as police sirens are heard outside. The IMF get back together at the airstrip and fly off. Mission accomplished. I'm going to give this episode a grade of a C+. Starting with the good. The guest cast is really quite good, especially uh, Joe Moross as Clegg. He's been in every season at least once, and we will see him again in season seven. I'm sure of that. Uh, also, we have, of course, Anthony Zerb as Reese Dolan, uh, who's always excellent when he is on the show. This is really a good role for him, too. It does remind me of his last role from, from season five uh, in the episode called The Amateur. Uh, again, this is another one where he plays this very, very self-assured guy who's not as smart as he actually, as he thinks he is. Uh, that, that That's kind of a common thing in most of the episodes that he's been in. I remember also the season two episode, The Photographer. It was very much the same thing. You know, guy who thinks I got it all figured out, but the IMF shows him, nah, you really don't. Anyway, in this case, it's not like the amateur where I commented that he really does kind of schmuckify himself due to his own lameness in a sense. This time, it's not totally his fault. He really did get played by the IMF here. Also really good. The MVP in this episode is definitely, to me, Bruce Watson, who plays Charlie Finch. Interestingly, he seems to be the prime mover of the plot. The main mission with Dolan and Clegg and the drugs and all of that kind of stuff, it seems kind of secondary. Um, he, Finch is borderline kind of an incidental character, although, you know, we, we really wouldn't look at him that way because, he you know, he doesn't generate any sympathy. He's one of Clegg's, you know, thugs or heavies or whatever you want to call him. Um He's really the only difficulty for the IMF. Everything else kind of goes rat-a-tat-tat. I really do like him as a wild card. I think it's it's really, really well done. And his role in the story is really, really well executed. It is really interesting, though, how very much like in episodes where we do have sympathetic, incidental characters, in in in, in a lot of them... The episode focuses on them rather than the main mission. And this is a really, really interesting case to me. The only thing that's lacking with Charlie Finch is the sympathy factor because he's one of the bad guys. 
But anyway, I, I just found that really, really interesting. There's really good teamwork in this episode, although Willie's side is a little bit on the low side, but it's still okay. Uh, it is an earned win for the team, not for the usual reasons, so, though. And that kind of moves me into the uh, point counterpoint. I think that this is an entertaining story. But it does have quite a few plot holes, and I'm going to go over uh, many of those. The, but really, the ending. The ending is messy and overbooked. Those are the two words that come to my mind when I'm thinking about this ending. I, I, compare it, and like I said, I'll go through some of the things that, 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 I, that I noticed or that I found. Compare it to Nerves, an episode, the episode from a, um, a two ago with Christopher George. Nerves also had some plot holes, and I mentioned what those were. The difference, though, was that in that episode, the mission was very, very, very clear. And there was only one antagonist that the IMF was going after. That generally, that usually creates a good story. It's clear to follow. with this one guy we, we're really after, and there's one thing we're really after, this one goal. Here the IMF is after a whole bunch of targets, and everything gets kind of jumbled, right? They're trying to put multiple people out of business, and I've mentioned before that when there are multiple antagonists, it can and tends to get pretty messy. Speaking of the plot holes, I think there, there are a lot, of, a lot of questionable things in this episode. Some of them I, I, I found on my own. There are some that I found, you know, looking at uh, the odd uh, review on the internet and that sort of thing. Um, and, and I'll go through some of those. One of the things that I found, and I think that this is a really, really glaring one, is that there comes a point where Clegg, the dealer in the U.S., and the supplier in Istanbul, who is not named, they talk to each other about, hey, what's going on with Dolan? Where are the drugs? Where's the money? What's going on? If they know each other or if they can be put in touch with one another, doesn't that make Dolan's involvement a little bit weird? Why would they not make some kind of deal with each other and say, hey, let's use somebody who's mutually acceptable to us? Now, maybe they did that with Dolan, but in the beginning, Dolan seems to be like, like I, I, I don't know, Dolan seems to be just kind of introducing himself to Clegg and saying that, you know what, hey, I can do this for you. I can do it better than, you know, your usual guys. So I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's weird. Uh, I don't know why, you know, maybe Clegg demanded to know, hey, where, you know, where's your stuff coming from? That's possible. But, you know, my recollection is that the guy from Turkey called Clegg. Why Dolan would, I can, I can sort of understand because, you know, Dolan is demanding money from Clegg as a, for startup cash. I can sort of understand why he might have to give some answers to Clegg about where he's getting his raw opium from. Maybe. But why would he tell the guy in Turkey who his dealer is or who his distributor is? That absolutely doesn't make any sense to me because the first thing, again, I don't know anything about this kind of activity, but the first thing I would do is if I knew a distributor and I had the stuff that that distributor wanted, I'd go make a beeline and I'd make a, I'd want to get a deal with that distributor and then let him worry about it. You take my stuff, you'll pay top dollar for it, you figure it out. That's what I would do. So I, I can't, I just can't, that, that just doesn't make any sense to me. And that is a pretty big plot hole. Another big plot hole is the, the part of the episode where Charlie Finch manages to get into the house and grab Casey when she goes up to her room. This is right after Paige's body is discovered, after um, you know Charlie Finch has knifed him. It's not clear how long that takes, but... Once they find the body, they come back to the house. Jim has a bit of a chat with uh, Willie and Casey telling him, okay, we got to be careful, this kind of thing. Maybe five or ten minutes elapsed. But wouldn't the first thing the IMF do is lock the windows and doors so that, you know, for their own security? 
I, I, the only – that to me was just so glaring. Maybe there just wasn't enough time, and maybe that was something that Casey was going to do. But it would have made a lot more sense to me, frankly, if Casey had entered the room and instead of, you know, going to the closet or whatever and getting prepared to go to sleep, she went right to the window and prepared to lock it. And then if Charlie Finch came in from the window and, you know, busted busted his way in, that might have made a little bit more sense. But, you know, with this – with some guy coming around – who could potentially mess up the mission, that was pretty glaring to me. I realize it's critical to the plot moving forward, but mm, man, that's that, that's a pretty glaring one. Also, speaking of Paige, the guy who Charlie Finch kills, he's kind of useless, isn't he? What is he along for? I, I, I'm guessing that he must be Dolan's security, um, you know, because obviously they don't need him for any of the lab work, Dolan and the other guy Bates can handle it on their own. Uh, so he was just kind of along for the ride. He's a you know Dolan's trigger happy thug. Um, he comes along for the ride and he just gets killed. Uh, and that that was kind of strange to me too. I really really didn't get that. Some of the other things that people pointed out to me that I didn't kind of get on the, uh, on the, when I was watching, but might be good points for discussion here. Uh, it was pointed out that clearly that there's cooperation of law enforcement agencies in several countries. Barney talks to an official in, in Rome and, um, you know, there, there, clearly there are other people involved. If the IMF is able to pick up these guys in Turkey, uh, you know, they, they, they're obviously, you know, involved as well. And so the question is, well, couldn't they have mounted the scam somewhere closer to the real Malo and not go through all of, you know, the shenanigans that they had to? And I thought about that and I said, you know what? I, it clearly, the IMF want to be closer to the United States. And that, and, and I feel that that makes sense. It's much, much easier for them to control the environment. They obviously, it, it's obviously much easier for them to have, you know, the police available at their, you know, at, at their beck and call, so to speak, uh, if they're actually in the United States. So I think that's, that's the reason why. It was pointed out that the end game really isn't very strong. I agree with this. The key successes are gained simply by tracing Dolan's calls and identifying the members of the drug network. Absolutely true. That's what was pointed out to me. That's actually a quote. Um, and I, I and I do agree that the as I mentioned, the ending is kind of messy and overbooked. One of the kind of follow up points for that is. Um, again, this is a quote that I read. I'm not sure what getting Clegg to accuse Dolan of a double cross actually accomplishes. Since their relationship was brand new, and it's not like Clegg had a lot of trust in him to begin with. Yeah, I get. I, I, I suppose that's true, but I, I I think it's more for the idea of kind of putting them together. Um, if they're found together, they can't claim that they don't know each other. Mr. Clegg, what are you doing here? It's not. It's very very different from finding Mr. Clegg in his office. Um, and, and really, this is kind of the only way to get Clegg out of his office if he thinks or if he realizes that, hey, Dolan is double-crossing me. That would make him go and find out what's going on for himself. Uh, since he hadn't heard, I, I assume he hadn't heard from Charlie Finch or um, how could he have. So, that, so I, I'm not so sure about that. I think that there is some value in having Clegg and Dolan together. Another thing that was pointed out, this is another quote, with the police coming at the end, what are they going to be arrested for? Neither of them shot Finch. I guess being found with the drug equipment could be pretty damning, except that the IMF set up that drug equipment for them, so it's entrapment. I, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer, okay? But Dolan's fingerprints, as well as Bates, are all over the equipment, so, you know, with all of the other, you know, circumstantial evidence that the IMF would collect, uh, you know, I think that that would be a pretty darn good case. You're going to, you know, I don't think these guys are going to be able to explain their way out of this one. And the, the final quote that I saw is, that it could be that they were going to be arrested anyway for the crimes they'd already been linked uh, to through the phone traces. 
Um, and, and I think that that is a, 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 a absolutely correct. But again, that means that the important stuff happened without ceremony earlier in the episode, and the climax doesn't really amount to much. I agree. The ending is rather anticlimactic. The IMF have already sort of accomplished the mission by the time, you know, they've got Clegg going to the house and they've identified the guy in Turkey. That's what they were supposed to do. And, and, and then, and the rest of it is just really kind of clean up and dealing with the wild card of Charlie Finch. So yeah, again, kind of, kind of a jumbled, messy, overbooked ending. And that's why I think I'm very comfortable giving this one a grade of a C plus. Again, entertaining, but like many episodes lately, they just haven't quite landed the ending on this one. And I think that's about it. Thank you all for watching. As always, please like this episode review video. Uh, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And please leave your comments about what you thought about this episode. I'd like to hear your thoughts about some of the plot holes that I uh, talked about here and uh, what, what you thought about it. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time.